This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so thank you for joining us in HL7 India's virtual HIR Connectathon. And uh, a very, very warm welcome to everybody joining in from Qatar to Netherlands to Pune to Bangalore, literally all over the globe. Uh, I have people who are uh, sure. Okay, all right. So um, I would now like to introduce Dr. Chandil Gunashekara who is uh, chairing HL7 India for the second time. He is a healthcare IT enthusiast with varied interest in interoperability and product management. He has worked with brands such as Saber Apollo, Narayan Rudalia, Esther Hospitals, and has also been product manager for two really large enterprise solutions, Magnum and Infinity. I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Shandil, for the next five minutes. Yeah, thank you, Radhika. Uh, very heartening to see so many faces on the screen. And yeah, we're all excited. This is our first eFire Connected On for HL7 India. And this has come out as a, an effort of long standing planning and also kind of a collaboration of efforts from many stakeholders. And uh, I think we're all excited because uh, it's one, it's an, a deviation from the usual conference or a usual connectathon. And we are also excited because this is supposed to solve many problems which the situation has forced us into. And uh, we are pleased to have uh, Mr. Rajendra Prasad Gupta who's here on the call, Manik Graham who's joined us from Australia and Sadhna who's joined us from HL7 International and all the participants. And I think the issue before us, which the pandemic has posed, is something more bigger than what each one of us are facing. Uh, this encompasses new challenges in terms of how do we connect to the world, especially when we cannot travel, uh, how do we service the requirements of the hospitals where the uh, support is remote, and how do we also enhance adaptability of uniformity in terms of standards. And most of the join us today are i'm sure are working in this space to address these issues and uh, we at hl7 india are more than happy to foster any kind of uh, work that can faster and you know, kind of bring solutions onto the table and this is our first initiative in that direction business continuity uh, upcoming challenges medically and also in terms of information challenges are something which we are foreseeing in the days to come and our effort is to see how we can get all stakeholders onto the common platform. Uh, when I say all stakeholders, I also mean the government. Uh, sometimes challenges force us towards greater heights of achievement. And I think this pandemic has also pushed us in that direction. It is very heartening to note that government of India for the first time, perhaps, has asked for reports to be sent in a digital format from the states to the government, the central government. So this might be the first step towards developing a national level HIE. There have been fragmented efforts in this direction. Uh, I think this could be one scope for a uniform decision in that regard. We have also appealed to uh, many state governments, the central government, to bring in a platform for uh, health information exchange digitally across the country. I'm sure that is on what we are doing as a country. I'm sure we are also helping other countries do it because of the development we do here on the Indian soil and we service other countries. Um, work as well so in this context i think uh, i would say this conference is going to be first time for many things uh, first time for hl7 india first time for us to do a e fhir first time to see so much of enthusiasm for us and first time for us to see also develop india specific country profiles and first time by by the third day we'll have many more first to come and we would be happy to uh, look at this as we thread along in the next three days and come across many challenging situations on an information exchange front and solve it with mutual community building effort. And uh, lastly, this is a community initiative and this is the healthcare IT initiative, which is collaborative, contributive in nature for the standards development. Uh, with this, I think we are more poised, we are more open for 
any kind of interaction that would require to build the ecosystem stronger and to contribute towards a better healthcare, better well-being of the world. Uh, with this, I hand it over back to you, Radhika. Thank you, Dr. Chandil. Uh, I would now like to introduce someone who is revered globally for his contribution to public policy. He has played an important role in drafting the national health policy, national education policies for labor and employment, and also the health policy for the state of Uttar Pradesh. He was in the core team to draft the digital health guidelines at the WHO. Professor Rajendra Pratap Gupta, in 2012, he was felicitated by the Sheriff of Los Angeles as the global healthcare leader for three years in a row. He was named the thought leader of the year by ICT Post and honored by Medgate today as amongst the 25 living legends of healthcare in India. Considering his global contribution, he was nominated to the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council. He has authored four bestsellers, Healthcare Reforms in India, Making Up for the Lost Decades, Your Vote is Not Enough, Your Decree is Not Enough, and Tough Choices and Hard Decisions. Professor Gupta has been invited by global organizations like UNESCO, World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and others. And I would now want him to take over the stage for the next 15 minutes. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm thankful to Chandil for giving me the opportunity to interact with you all. And I see many friends on this forum. I see Chandil, Satyam, Anirudh, uh, Suptain, amongst others, Manik. Uh, thank you for uh, you know inviting me. I think this is a very impactful forum, and that's why I saw every reason to be here to be interacting with you. You know, given the long biota that has been read, I am easier because now I have to spend less time talking to you. But let me take you back to 1982. You know, when the Internet Protocol suit was standardized. The, to the transmission control protocol and the internet protocol. This led to the worldwide network called internet. Otherwise, we won't be talking to each other. Leave along the connect now. I think this is the simplest, you know, way to explain the importance of interoperability. Today we use internet because it is standardized. It is interoperable with disparate systems that each one of us. I think we are around 300 people here from different countries are using it. Now healthcare has somehow not been a beneficiary of interoperability and i'll uh, walk you through what i have seen as a policy maker and what i hope to see as expectations from this connected home so way back in 2013 i started putting interoperability on the table of policy makers it was a tough thing to make people understand what the world interoperability meant so then I led and created a report called Interoperability of Medical Devices in India, Prevalence, Projections, and Prospects. It's on Google. I think if you Google up, you will find that report. It has got an update on what's happening globally, what are standards, what we need to do. Uh, and also had a chance to uh, work in the government directly. So I had an additional secretary who first didn't understand what interoperability was. But once he got a hang of it, he was an engineer, by the way. Then in every meeting, he would say, I want interoperability to be the core of anything we are doing in digital. So that was a major uh, success. But now let me also give you a chandel spoke about what COVID has led us to. How data has helped. I'll just give you one example. Taiwan today is a major success story. You know, when you look at its borders with China and the way it has kept the rates and the debts low. So what it has done is the citizens international travel history record it has merged with the insurance and allowed doctors and pharmacists to use this data and this has been phenomenal well these are a different level of data interoperability what we need is more in india and probably other countries in the last uh, two months i've been chairing a committee of drafting the digital health standards for india 
And uh, one of the key things that I've decided to address is interoperability. I have a separate working group on interoperability that is looking at it. So we have been looking at Fire, uh, HL7, all the standards, because one of the things that India is going to do is start giving accreditation to digital health providers, whether you are a software developer, whether you are a med tech provider, you're a medical device provider, whether you're a clinician or a large hospitals. So the goal that you know we have is that once these standards are out, we will start doing accreditation so that you know people who provide digital health services in India, under the gamut of digital health comes everything right till AI, you know, and we are looking at covering all aspects of that. So we hope that maybe early next year we will start giving the NABH accreditation to providers. So we do have exciting times ahead and COVID has done one thing that uh, for all the two decades, I haven't seen so much thrust and momentum for digital health as I have seen in the past three months. It's now a reality. I'm leading a study actually in 126 countries as I speak. And before this COVID, the preparedness was 10 to 14%. Now it's 84%. Right from the patients to providers, they're saying, if it comes to using digital health, the preparedness is 84% in terms of their ability to use it. And sometimes, you know, it is more of a choiceless option. When there's a lockdown, you can't even go out. You have to use digital tools. In that context, today's connectathon is very critical. You are solving the practical problems that people will have to face and address and plug and play with the solutions that you provide for. I think this is, for me, not a ordinary event. This is a very critical event for success of digital health, what we have been talking. Yes, one thing I would like to understand, maybe I'll connect with Chandil and other members of the team, is the mapping of HL7, V2, and 5. Because as a policymaker, I am looking at giving the option of all the standards to people who look at it from uh, being agnostic. And uh, I also want to engage with HL7 India on how we could work because within the team for developing the standards, we are certainly looking at HL7 standards. So I think this is an exciting uh, time. Uh, you have uh, a great connectathon, and I look forward to interacting with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Gupta, for your wise words there. And uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to how the next three days unroll for us. Next up, I would like to introduce someone who is a health tech entrepreneur from Chennai. He graduated as an engineer with an MBA from IIM Bangalore in the year 1986 and has lived in the US for several decades, having worked with Wall Street as a VP. Radhika, I think we have lost you. Are you there? OK, I'll take it forward from there. I think uh, Radhika, uh, that's a starting for introduction to Manik. Manik Rajendran has been a driving force for interoperability here in India. Uh, he's been working since the time he came back here, uh, coming from finance background to healthcare. Uh, we have been from HLSM, we've been closely working with him for more than a decade. And he's been a driving force for interoperability events. And he's somebody who's got hands on experience in Connected On, both in US as well as here in India. And uh, I had the chance of working with him in the last two connectathons, what we did uh, in association with Philips and with St. John's Hospital in Bangalore. And we he did take it forward uh, with the association of hospitals, uh, the meetings there. And we look forward to interact with him. Over to you, Manik. Thank you, Dr. Chandil. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, Professor Rajendra Gupta for being here with us. Uh, his uh, talk, even though it was very brief, very insightful, and uh, we all should take note of uh, the direction that his uh, talk went through. And uh, thank you again for being here and uh, hoping to get more insight from you over the next three days. Um, welcome all geeks. Exactly, you're all geeks. That's what you all are. And uh, in the health tech world that we are in, one of the big days that bring us uh, a rush are connectathon days. This activity uh, could be as short as one day or spread over a work week. 
And it all started with integrating the health enterprise, IHE, starting this gala way back in 1999. Since then, this proprietary event, this particular name itself has become a noun used by various standards organizations. The event is essentially a gathering of uh, uh, engineering talent all in one room for the sole purpose of achieving interoperability. They, uh, on their own, they represent several organizations competing with each other in the marketplace. But once they come together during the event, they form a pool of intellectual property, how to do, what to do, and what each of them need to do to do together what they each set out to do individually. That is to provide solutions for the world. So here we are for the Maiden HL7 India Connectathon event. Now what a time to do it in. The global pandemic needs every hand in the healthcare field to pull the weight and contribute. Now more than ever, we need collaborating professionals to use standards in dynamic ways so that their efforts can be synergized into a holistic offering to all the stakeholders. And the stakeholders are none other than every one of us. So soon after an, an industry event uh, that Dr. Chandil alluded to, the KHO event last year, some of us started to ideate that we need to bring about a concerted effort at achieving interoperability. Of course, prior caught our uh, imagination and we began to socialize the idea among programmers and CEOs of tech companies. HL7 India had by then started to work out a nationwide effort to promote FHIR. And after all we said, uh, any programmer can become uh, a web uh, uh, programmer these days. And if he's already a web programmer, he can become a health tech programmer if only he gets to become an expert in fire. So just as we finished a one day uh, HL7 India's uh, a uh, fire training event in Chennai on February 29. COVID descended on us big time. And shortly thereafter, the telemedicine practice guidelines was included as Appendix 5 in Chapter 3 of the Professional Conduct Etiquette and Ethics Regulations of 2002. At that point, all health group broke loose as companies started to develop solutions in very quick time to help doctors and patients. And through all of that pandemonium, a dedicated team of volunteers and HL7 India officers worked slowly and steadily to, to set up this first of a kind event. And Chandil did say there are a lot of firsts with this event. And it is truly a first of a kind event. HL7 India Connectathon, and it's virtual. We thought maybe there'll be 30 to 40 delegates that might register. Uh -uh. We have today 225 from over 60 companies who have already gone through 10 expert pre connectathon sessions. And these pre connectathon sessions have been done by an international and Indian bank of experts. And collectively, we have logged well over a thousand hours to now come on July 3rd to work together and book some good wins for the country as one huge big community. And there are several experts who have worked behind the scenes to make this happen. For the next three days, each one of us will be in one of five tracks. Five tracks, that's a huge thing. And all of them will be in five unique classrooms or session rooms. And they will be a fire starter track, a fire India profiling, COVID-19 teleconsultation, a version two to fire and terminology. So let us make use of this opportunity to strengthen our resolve to commit to standards and interoperability. Welcome to all. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to be part of this huge event. Over to you, Radhika. Thank you so Radhika. much, Mr. Manik. Oh, uh, that was wonderful listening to you. And of course, everyone's having an opportunity to really contribute to healthcare in a digital first way right now. Uh, we are living history quite literally. I would now like to introduce someone who is amazing. He is FHIR product director at HL7. He is the inventor of FHIR and project lead of the FHIR core team, Mr. Graham Greve. He travels around the world. He keeps giving lectures. He guides connectathons and he advises governments, vendors, care providers, 
about all aspects of interoperability. We are so glad that he is here uh, for our virtual event. He was on the list of 15 health IT standards and interoperability rock stars to know. It's an absolute honor to have him here. And uh, over to you, Mr. Graham. Uh, thanks very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I really, I had hoped to be here and be with you in person and you were one of my 12 overseas trips that I had lined up and thanks Kumar for inviting me. Um, and I really, I really wanted to come to India actually. Um, it's been a long time, been, you know, on my list of countries to, uh, to experience, but not to be. And uh, I, it looks like I'm going to be stuck in Australia for a long time yet. Um, but fortunately, I can visit you remotely. Now I'm down to uh, speak to you tomorrow, so I'm not going to say very much right now, other than that um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I will, I'm on the hook to be here to speak to you tomorrow and to be at the closing close up, but I'm going to try and pop in occasionally so you can ask me technical questions um, if you need any uh, help or to resolve difficult questions. Um, but I'm really excited to see uh, a community forming around fire in India. Um, our focus for a long time, we've believed that we need to build um, capacity uh, in every country, but India is one of those countries so that you guys can take what we've done and go and turn it into solutions in, uh, in your own country. And I think now is a time of great need yeah, all the way around the world. And, and I'm wishing you all the best um, to make a difference, score goals. Uh, don't be afraid to stack up hard questions and bring them to me, or you can take them to the FIRE community itself on chat.fire.org. Um, so I'm really looking forward to hearing how things go over the next couple of days. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Graham, and uh, that is wonderful to hear, not being afraid to ask tough questions, and all of you here are definitely problem solvers, and it is amazing to, to have you together for the next three days. I would now like to introduce someone who is a multifaceted and a complete healthcare IT software development leader, uh, over the course of 21 years, he has uh, graduated from being an engineer and an architect uh, to uh, varied leadership roles in software product development and healthcare IT. Here's introducing Mr. Madhusudan Karupakula, who is now heading the R&D for a flagship interoperability offering from Philips since the year 2011. Over to you, Mr. Madhusudan. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon to uh, all of you and also the speakers. I think it sets a very good uh, context. I think it's very clear that uh, the whole uh, healthcare IT revolution in India is uh, just uh, taking off. And as uh, mentioned, uh, uh, the whole COVID situation is also spurring a lot of uh, innovation uh, where we see uh, telehealth initiatives and uh, even the way the government is uh, tracking all the COVID patients is uh, really amazing. Uh, if you look at some of the uh, contact tracing and all this kind of applications we see over the net, I think uh, India is at the cusp of a uh, healthcare IT revolution. And in that context, uh, this uh, Fire Connectathon is a well-timed event uh, where the whole community is coming together and uh, putting forward a platform for the future of India. Uh, in this context, uh, I would just uh, you know, reflect the past uh, 10 years I uh, spent at Philips uh, driving the interoperability strategy uh, for the whole company. Uh, we have been uh, trying to standardize for all of our systems and solutions. Uh, how do we deliver to the world? 
in this context uh, uh, i have uh, you know uh, uh, got some learnings and I thought uh, if I could uh, share a few of those, it will be also a good input uh, uh, to the whole India strategy that we are having, and uh, how we can, uh, you know, uh, learn from that and uh, take it, uh, take it uh, to the India strategy. So uh, the, the the foremost, uh, right? Uh, we, uh, uh, we we talk about uh, standards. Mother, uh, do you have a screen share? Uh, I can I can share that also. Just to give me a minute. Let me just uh, flash my screen. Just give me a second. Yeah, can you see that, uh, Satyam? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly uh, what I was trying to uh, say. Uh, I just want to share my learnings uh, for the India strategy. Uh, and in terms of uh, now, what are the key uh, drivers of uh, interoperability are. It was uh, very clear from the earlier speakers uh, mm -hmm. that the interoperability has remained a, you know, a tough challenge uh, for the industry. Uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, I visited the last uh, 10 uh, connected thons and uh, hymns but interoperability remains the major uh, you know, challenge uh, for the industry. Uh, in that context, uh, just you know, try to uh, evaluate you know, the standards. For, uh, for example, uh, uh, we've, uh, uh, I started off uh, you know, in consumer electronics uh, industry, that's in the beginning part of my career. Uh, there we have seen you know, standards uh, like you know, DLNA or HDMI, uh, which are you know, prevalent in that space. And which has really enabled the uh, exchange of uh, no audio and uh, uh, video, uh, uh, video uh, across all vendors. This is something that was very much uh, possible uh, in that industry, and uh, they've they've cracked the nut there. I think uh, as we uh, go move forward, I think uh, uh, relying on standards will be a very very important uh, uh, step there. I, I know that healthcare is very complex. Uh, it's uh, variable. It's mission critical. And the doctor's practice, uh, you know, is uh, it's uh, different in each region, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, imagine if you don't even start with uh, some some amount of standardization in the in the way we talk, right? Uh, so I've seen many of these initiatives where it's been in a proprietary mode. They'll start and gain some traction, and uh, they will uh, they'll go down. And uh, in that context, uh, it's so important that uh, we uh, base ourselves and communicate with each other on standards. Uh, for example, now HL7 2.x has been a standard, uh, de facto standard in the industry uh, for a long time. And uh, with uh, all uh, the cloud and the uh, mobility uh, uh, mobile apps uh, taking off, uh, we see a huge uh, dem demand for API by these standards. And this is where uh, Fire is uh, emerging. So very clearly, uh, as a company, uh, we have uh, you know uh, very much committed. You can see the amount of uh, you know participation and drive that we have from Philips. So we are very extremely committed committed to HL7 and Fire uh, to you know uh, act up for, for us to get the standard as the base. The second question is: Is standards alone sufficient? Uh, if you look at uh, the way, uh, as I said, the healthcare is so complex, right? Each doctor does it uh, does it in his own way. Uh, there's the the protocols are different. So it is it is you know uh, the healthcare is very very uh, complex, and so in is a huge amount of variability across countries, across regions you know, within the country itself, and uh, you know uh, with all the uh, vendors involved, etc. So. What happens uh, in practice, what we see is there's a huge amount of variability when you go to a hospital. So there's uh, practically it comes down to every clinical workflow that we have to work and ensure that uh, it is uh, finally uh, working well in the hospitals. We should remember that uh, at the end of anything we do, there's a patient and we should make, the, make it so robust that uh, it doesn't fail. So there's a huge amount of uh, customization that needs to be done. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done for every workflow in every hospital. So the main point there I'm trying to tell you is, though the standard is the base, you need to do a lot of customization to make it finally work and ensure that the uh, end clinical workflow is working for the doctors and the patients who are finally uh, going to be our, our customers. 
So uh, customization is going to be a, a huge amount of work and there's enough work for all of us and there's no need of you know, uh, you know uh, fighting with each other and uh, stepping on each other. There's enough work and more uh, for us to make this whole healthcare IT happen. That's the uh, second uh, uh, main point I wanted to make. And uh, uh, taking it forward, uh, the third point, I think it was also referred by our earlier speakers. Uh, finally, uh, it's, uh, it's always amazing the amount of uh, you know, people touch points that happen uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in such connectathons. Uh, it's, I, I, so sometimes we see so many problems getting solved in these connectathons. And I compare this to uh, real life hospital scenarios, the same co level of cooperation doesn't exist. You'll al you're always worried uh, whether the other vendor is going to take over or uh, what is going to happen. And finally, the interoperability fails. So my, uh, what I urge all of you is you know, develop those touch points across companies uh, and these kind of events are very useful to build this uh, relationship. At the end of the day, people in property will you know, uh, uh, drive a lot more uh, uh, intro, will solve a lot more interoperability problems on top of uh, standards and uh, customization. And the final uh, challenge uh, I would say is uh, you know how we do the business modeling, right? As I said, uh, even if uh, you know people want to cooperate, sometimes when you go into the hospitals, uh, there's a vendor, there's a EMR, uh, all these people will be there, and they wouldn't, uh, there's hardly any cooperation that will happen. So we need to find some uh, you know good mood or business models that uh, finally uh, you know uh, that should enable uh, interoperability. Uh, this is a challenge uh, for the whole industry. Uh, despite all uh, all kinds of uh, initiatives, uh, the, the interoperability certain times breaks around, and uh, maybe we should think of how do we standardize, uh, how do we get people together, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, for example, uh, for example, in India we have the Aishman Bharat as a concept, which is sort of uh, benchmarked uh, all the uh, so health uh, healthcare uh, delivery. So that could act as a benchmark and this forces uh, you know, hospitals and uh, healthcare IT providers to collaborate and establish standards. So uh, that also means that uh, data has to be exchanged and it will drive uh, interoperability. And uh, maybe also look at uh, how the whole uh, you know, healthcare space is incentivized, right? Uh, the, right now, the incentive is for to do more procedures and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, your usage of the devices. So uh, maybe as we go to value-based care and uh, the incentive is towards uh, you know, saving money and, uh, and a healthy population is more important, then you need to connect uh, more data for across the, uh, you know, the patient's entire uh, uh, history uh, before he's sick and after he gets sick, et cetera, right? So that more and more data collection uh, needs to be enabled to uh, drive down costs. So choosing the right uh, business model uh, is, uh, is, is uh, critical. So, uh, in summary, as I said, you know, the standards, customization, people interoperability, and business modeling are the right things that need to get uh, get right. And uh, if we keep all these things in mind, I think uh, you know our whole India strategy also uh, will um, uh, fall, in, fall in place. And also in these COVID times, I've seen amazing stuff being uh, done. Uh, it's very, as, as we also realize that it's very important uh, to keep uh, you know the patients uh, who are tested positive in house and uh, to really find out if they're sick or not. And only when they're sick, they take them to the hospitals. This is so important. And uh, this whole pandemic has uh, uh, made us uh, come up with solutions uh, to track and monitor patients at home. And uh, only if they're sick, take them to hospital. So this is all this is uh, you know driving uh, the demand for interoperability. So uh, with that uh, thought and the impact that we can have, uh, I wish all of you uh, good luck in the Fire Connectathon and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Mr. Madhusudan. And I would now like to introduce someone who's been uh, pretty amazing all this while. And I've been working along with him to uh, uh, ensure that we come together for this event. So here's introducing someone who works on interoperability at Phillips. He has worked at companies such as G Healthcare uh, in the past. And over to Kumar Sector. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Radhika. So, uh, yeah, uh, glad to see this participation. And uh, when we started, it was just a, a thought, a dream. 
that uh, we can do this something like this and uh, we were not expecting this cloud uh, crowd to be frank right but slowly and uh, team and the track leads we just uh, built the momentum right so we have 225 registrations and uh, so i'll just take you through the tracks what are the tracks and who are the track leads in those tracks and how do you get to do the business right uh, so one of the instructions that i got from the track leads and was that do not extend this uh, uh, session do not extend this uh, start a starting ceremony beyond 420 because they didn't have time such is the packed agenda that the track uh, leads have uh, prepared okay and uh, other thing to note is like the tracks are under preparation for last one month right so last one month and most of you will be a, a witness to it right most of the track leads were working at least two to three hours every day with all the participants for last one month to give the tracks shape and to make sure that uh, things are ready right so now uh, the first track that we had and the design of the tracks is also such that it actually shows you a picture of entire fire fire ecosystem or how to do it so first one is a fire starter track uh, this is modeled on the patient uh, track that uh, international had but we had uh, so much of customizations and uh, 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 improvisations that we have done so this fire starter track is actually the track for anyone who wants to get their hands dirty with fire like so if, even if you don't know anything about uh, fire but you uh, you understand healthcare and you know uh, basics of uh, technology you can uh, get in there and you at the end of uh, two days you will learn about fire how what it does what it does not do how to work with resources and other things so that's there and that track has the maximum number of participants so close to around 90 participants are there in uh, in uh, fire starter track so the second track we have is uh, fire india profiling track uh, that's the track uh, which is uh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Are you sharing your screen? No, I'm not. Okay. 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 The second track that we have is a, a Fire India profiling track. So we have taken the NDHB National Digital Health Blueprint recommendations of the fire, uh, fire resources, and we started the work on uh, doing the profiling. So there are around uh, two dozen resources that are mentioned in uh, NDHB. Again, the profiling team has been working uh, continuously for last uh, one month. To come up with the first set of profiles the basics uh, we are saying we are not now in bc at least we have started we are in zero so after this the counting starts positive right so that's the profiling track this track number three is a, a covid uh, teleconsultation track that track actually is about uh, having a, can you guys hear me yeah so that track is uh, actually about a fire platform and how it can help uh, in teleconsultation so the uh, the profiles related to that, the platform related to that, the software network, all those things, that's the teleconsultation track. Track number four is what uh, Dr. Rajendra Gupta asked for, V2 to fire track. This again is a track that uh, it has been taken from the HL7 international track. And we are just continuing the same uh, work. We are going to test out the mappings and we are going to see if certain uh, things will work out. So that's the video to fire track and the last track is the terminology track so there are a lot of clinicians and there are a lot of people who want to understand what is terminology and how does fire play with the terminology services and how does all the things work so that track is for uh, uh, terminology services over the course of one month we had so many expert speakers uh, like uh, uh, john hans and others who came up and helped all the track leads to prepare the tracks so that's how the tracks have been formed and that's how the things have been uh, shaped up so that's the basic introduction to all the tracks with this uh, i hand it over back to radhika for the next set thank you satyam so um our tracks are going to start at 4 20 like he said and that leaves us with ample time to have some fun activities uh, so I would now request everyone to please get up from your chair like you can position your webcam in a way that you are visible but please 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 get up from your chair and we are doing a quick session of laughter yoga 
um, A, because it involves laughter and I don't think anybody minds laughing and B, because yoga really brings us together. It is uh, together collectively and it helps us in uniting with our own selves. So um, I don't see a lot of videos, but that's okay. If you are comfortable with your camera <laughs> off, that's perfectly okay. And uh, yeah, so um, here's how it goes. And I did hear someone laughing already, which is fantastic. I need cheerleaders like that. So take a deep breath and we are going to do five repetitions of this. Uh, if you are not able to have your camera on, please, please, please unmute yourself because I don't want to be the only one like Mokango Kushua who's laughing. So at least unmute yourself. I'll be happy to just listen to your voices. And take a deep breath, raise your hand, and as you come down, laugh out loud. Whatever is it, I love to feel free to do five repetitions. And it's okay, we can trick our minds. Our mind doesn't know whether it's real laughter or a fake one. So we can just laugh out loud. Oh and now, back to the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you get anyone you are quarantining with it's okay to get your pet it's okay to get get your chat if you're on the call until 4 20 it's okay to get your family friends whoever you want on the call with you we are cool uh because serious work starts after that so uh yeah so feel free to get your roommate partner spouse uh anybody you want to have with you on this call, feel free to turn on your cameras. That will really give me some confidence instead of only looking at black screens with one or two initials each. So, okay. Um, our next activity, if you have been able to get at least some people with you, it'll be fantastic. And our next activity is fairly simple. So, when I say up, we are going to move our heads up. When I say down, it obviously means down. Left is left and right is right. So we are clear, right? So, okay, let's have a show of this. Up. Down. Left. Right. Up, down, left, right, right. That's where you start getting out. So when you figure that you are someone who's not followed the instructions, it's like a rock, paper, scissors. You start dropping off. Okay. All right. So up, down. Left, right, down, down, right, left, up, left, down, right. All right. We just have a little twist here. So, Kahani we twist it. Every time I now say up, you have to change it with an action which is down. And every time I say down, you have to change it with the action which is up. We are good? Thumbs up? Okay. Up. Down. Up. 
down, up, down. <laughs> awesome. Now there's just one more twist to make it fill me enough. So every time I say left, it is going to be replaced by a right action. And when I say right, your movement is going to be towards the left. Okay, so up means down, down means up, left means right, right means left. It's just a little weird world we are living in right now. So, okay, let's make it interesting. Up, down, left, right. Right? Whoever's head I saw moving, just like mark yourself out. So, okay, up. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out too. <laughs> that was honest. Thank you. Up, down, left, right. Okay, awesome. So I do see that someone joined in with their daughter. Is it? Can you can you unmute yourself? Can your daughter say a hi to us? Santosh, it's you. Hi, he's Vishwa. He's my son. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, it was his son. Okay. Hi. This is my daughter. Hi. 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 This is my toy, Benny. Hello. This is my toy. This is my toy, Panda. And Panda says hello to your buddy. Mike, I'm not you. What do you do? I think I'll run out of toys if I have to compete. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Let's stand it on the way. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. So why are so, people dropping off? They want to go. What is happening? Uh, people are dropping off because I told them the serious stuff starts at 4:20. So maybe they are like going out for a walk in the rains. Is it? Yeah, maybe. So. I'll continue. Okay. All right. Uh, all right.